Brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, today, this solemn Holy Mass is a very special occasion for me. I am grateful to all of you, dear friends, for your participation in this celebration. On the 60th anniversary of my ordination as a priest, I never thought I'd make it. <laughs> With particular words of gratitude, I wish to address Bishop Sticka, who has been accompanying my pastoral mission for many years, 25 years. And I am now also grateful to the Vicar General and Rector of this beautiful church and the pastor of this community. Father David Boatner. I'm also thankful to all of you who make up this gathering today. Dear friends, for me it is a great privilege. And in my homily I would like to reflect and meditate on the beautiful gospel that the church gives us today for our reflection. Let my words be a meditation on being a Christian and also on being a priest today in this world. In today's gospel, St. John shows a very distinctive future for Christ, for Jesus. I am the Good Shepherd. These are the words that Jesus permits so willingly to be put on his lips. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is truly that, a good shepherd with his sheep. He is the shepherd of all mankind. He is the one who gave his life on the cross and made that life known by his remarkable resurrection from the dead. The Holy Church is responsible for the faithful transmission of the word of the living God. Priests, bishops, cardinals, popes are all accountable for proclaiming, for proclaiming Jesus Christ. They are responsible for proclaiming salvation. They are responsible for being shepherds like Jesus. Sometimes, however, the image of Christ as the Good Shepherd is blurred for us, and we can forget what it means to be a Good Shepherd and to lead the flock to heaven. To understand what it means to be a Good Shepherd, we must go back to the origins of Jesus' activity in Galilee. And look at the words spoken by his lips in Nazareth. We listen once again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Being a shepherd, however, being a spiritual father, being sent by Jesus is not completely easy. Being a shepherd means being the one who defends another who is in danger, sometimes putting his own life into jeopardy. For one reason, why would he do this? Because of salvation, because of sanctification, because of the dignity, the dignity of others 
the children of God. Yes, my brothers and sisters, being a shepherd involves danger, but being a shepherd also has the wonderful grace of uniting others with Christ. This is our role to bring others to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Dear friends in Christ, the priesthood of Christ, which has been part of my life for 60 years today, shows me the truth expressed in the vocation of the apostles called by Christ to be his disciples. They left everything, the scripture tells us, and went with him. They went with Christ. Yes, they left everything. When the Synod of Bishops was held in Rome in, in the early 1970s, Cardinal Wojtyla, now John Paul II, reflecting on the mystery of the priesthood, chose those words to describe the essence and meaning of his own priesthood. They left everything. The shepherd must leave everything behind to look after the flock, the flock that he loves, the, the flock that the father loves. The priesthood is about choosing life and an attitude toward life. It is not just about being able to perform sacred activities. It is above all a sign of leaving what is worldly, what belongs to this world. The priest may celebrate the liturgy, but it can happen that he does not have the liturgy in his heart. He may have the liturgy of the world, not the liturgy of heaven. Dearly beloved, in your family life, in your life as single people, in your life in the youth of so many of you, or in the consecrated life of others of you, or whatever situation you may find yourself in, no matter how beautiful or how difficult it is, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is present. We priests, deacons, bishops, consecrated persons, all of us are meant to be an expression of God's, in, of God's, are meant to be an expression of God's visible love. This is, what, this is what a family is. This is what every family is meant to be. The expression in a very wonderful way of God's own love. And so today we live this mystery of God's eternal love. For the last 60 years, I was blessed to be the expression of God's visible love in the 60 years that I was a priest. I have tried my best to be a good shepherd. I have tried to know the sheep entrusted to me in many different parts of the world. I have tried to know their problems and understand their needs, their joys, to understand their love. I was able also to accompany them at different stages of their lives. I am so grateful that Mother Church entrusted me with the task of shepherding, of being a shepherd in, with Christ himself. Shepherding first in Los Angeles, where I was ordained a priest on this day, then in Rome, then in Madagascar, the island of Madagascar, then in Philadelphia, 
and now in Knoxville. And all of this for one purpose, for one purpose. All of this was for the salvation and sanctification of the people of God, the people whom God loves, the people that are with us today. Yes, this is what we are trying to be faithful to, God's tremendous love. I am most grateful to the Lord Jesus who allowed me so many times in 60 years to defend the dignity of another human being. I am very thankful to Jesus for the gift of all the sacraments through which I as a priest can minister to you, his faithful people. And I would like to express my special gratitude to Bishop Sticka, who since the days of St. Louis never abandoned me. He has always been like a son to me, whom I can support in his Episcopal ministry now and in the days to come. I also express my words of gratitude, especially to Sister Clara, my secretary. <laughs> she is a help for me all the way from St. Louis until today. For me, her love for the church and the religious vocation is always an example of fidelity to Christ and to the life that comes from fulfilling the vocation given by God. Beloved friends, I am thankful to all of you, the people of God. You have this energy in you, which is the energy of Christ Jesus. And I am thankful to you for this beautiful church here in Knoxville, this cathedral. And I hope that this church will flourish with many vocations in the years ahead, many vocations to Christian marriage, to the religious life and the priesthood. I wish that the church in East Tennessee, built by you under the ministry of Bishop Sticka, may be a star in the darkness of the world and may always proclaim how good our Lord Jesus Christ is and how much he loves you. This is what it means to be a Catholic. Yes, to be loved by Jesus Christ, the Son of the Eternal Father. And now I ask that God will bless you. And, the, and our Holy Mother Mary, Mother of God, will always protect and guide your life and the life of your shepherds. And St. Joseph, who is the foster father of Jesus, that he too will be with you and help to build up the, the wonderful unity that exists with you. We are in the hands of God, but we trust. And the bishop here, Bishop Sticka, whom I'm so pleased to have with me on this occasion, his motto is, his Episcopal motto, a very special thing that he hopes to do in all the time that he is a bishop is to be able to realize his Episcopal motto, which is, Jesus, Jesus, I trust in you. Dear friends, today we show that all of us, as the people of God, together, that we express this as a motto of our bishop, but also as a great and wonderful intention that we are praying for and working for and sacrificing for. 
Jesus, I trust in you. Amen.